In the last lesson, we spent some time going through the various ways of going query data using the Query Builder. In this lesson, we're going to be specifically talking about querying relationships. Now, querying relationships is one area where the difference between using the model and using the database module is pretty significant. Since the database module doesn't make use of any of the relationship definitions within our models, it has no contextual information about our actual relationships. So for this lesson, we're going to be primarily utilizing the models when querying our relationships because it makes things just so much easier. Now, there's a single model that Lucid is going to provide us on both our models query builder and and our record instances called preload. And this preload method is going to cover the vast majority of the relationship querying we're gonna to need to do. So let's say we wanna query all projects within our database and we also want all tasks per project. So to start out with here, if we get rid of the last lessons uh, queries here and kind of clean this up a little bit, Okay, so first and foremost here, we're in the projects controller. Let's go ahead and since we're gonna be querying all projects and all their tasks, let's go up to the index method since this tends to be used for listing. Looks like we left this off with a fine menu. We can get rid of that and uncomment out this project.query. And so right here at this present point in time, we're already querying all projects from our database. So in order to add in all of the tasks per project, we can use this preload method to define that we want to explicitly load the tasks for these projects. And the underlying data that would be returned back to us is an array of our projects. And then within each project object is going to be an array of all of that project's tasks. Now ignore the strike through here. This is uh, one of the better comment um, extensions that I have installed within Visual Studio Code. So this would contain all of our task data and then out here would be all of our project data. Now you might've already guessed this, but if we needed to filter down the data for the model that we're preloading here, in this case, our tasks, the preload method actually accepts a second argument, which is a callback query. So here we have the query scope for our task here. So we can apply any query that we need to for this particular task. And remember these tasks are already going to automatically only return back the tasks that explicitly belong to its project record. So our tasks are already within the project itself. So that's taken care of. So we don't need to worry about that relationship binding there. So this would just be additional filtering beyond that relationship existence filter. So here we could do query dot query dot where, and let's say that we want to do it off of the status ID. And let's say that we want to do it where the status is complete. So here we're loading in all of our tasks and then we're preloading all tasks for the project where the task is marked as complete. And just like with a normal query builder, we can extend off of this as far or be as specific as we need to. So here we can order by and then maybe the do at date and then order that descendingly. Just be sure that you spell order correctly there and not orderly by. And again, just like we can with our normal query builder, we can also chain off as many times as we need to to preload additional relationships. So if we wanted to additionally preload all of the project's users, in addition to the tasks, all that we need to do is chain off another preload method and provide that we want the users for this project. And then just like we could here with tasks, if we wanted to, we could also use the query callback to filter down the users that we get back just the same as our tasks. Okay, so let's scroll down to our show statement here where we query just a single record. And so here, instead of querying all of our projects here, let's just find or fail the project by the param ID. So here we're just gonna get back a single project. And let's say that we wanna preload a relationship off of this record instance that we have right here for this single project. The preload method is actually available within this context as well. So here we can await project preload and we can find the relationships that we want to preload onto our project here. And the data structure for this is going to be pretty much the same as it is for the query builder preload, except instead of this being an array of our projects, it's just gonna be a single project. Okay, so let's say that for the authenticated user, in this case, we don't have authentication, but we're gonna mock an authenticated user. We want all projects assigned to the authenticated user, and we also want all tasks related to all of the user's projects. So let's go ahead and jump into our user's controller and mock this out here. So within our index, let's say that this is just some dashboard page. So within our index method here, we can go ahead and get our authenticated user. Again, we don't have authentication here, so let's just do const user equals await user dot find or fail. And then we could swap this out once we do cover authentication for the actual authentication user. And then since we have the instance of our user record here, we also have available to us the preload method. So we can await user.preload. And we already know that we have available to us the ability to preload any relationship assigned to this particular user here. So we could do projects to get all of this user's projects. However, within the query callback, for our preload, we also have available to us the full query builder. So we can also preload off of our preload to get kind of a nested preload going on here. So in addition to just preloading all projects for the user, we can also preload all tasks for all of the user's projects. And again, we're still working with the query builder within this scope. So we also have available to us all of the query builder methods. So we can order by, filter down the data however we need to. 
and all of that will work just fine. So for this particular query, the data that we would be getting back is first it would be an object of our user and then within our particular user, it would be an array of all of the projects. And then within each project object is going to be an array of all of that project's tasks. So we've gone through and we've covered how we can append related data to our existing query results, but what if we just want the related data in itself and not the underlying object that we're trying to relate from? So in this case, let's say maybe we just want the user's projects and their tasks and not the underlying user data itself. So to do this, we can use a different method here instead of preload. Let's go ahead and just comment this preload out. We can instead use a related method. So here we do user.related and then we define the relationship again that we want to grab. So in this case, we would want our projects. And at this point, you could anticipate that this is going to return back to us a representation of our project model. So we can mutate data directly using the model itself if we needed to. So in order to get to our query builder, we need to call query. And then from here, we have access to the full project query builder. So here at this point already, we're already querying all of the user's projects without the user data. So at this point, we would be getting back something like within our project controller, if we took out the task data, it would just be an array of our projects. And the only projects that we're gonna get back are the projects that this user is a member of. So since we're getting back data here, we can actually do const user projects equals, since it's going to return this data back to us. And then within our query builder here, we can actually go ahead and preload the tasks for these projects. So here we're getting all tasks that belong to a particular project record. So it's going to be tasks nested within our project objects. And then we're getting all projects that belong to this particular user. So here are the underlying data that we're getting back within our user's project is just this projects array and within. So it's going to be our projects array and then tasks within each project. And then again, just to drive home that we're just dealing with the query builder, no matter how deep we go into the scopage here, if we go ahead and we query off of our preloaded tasks, we can filter down the data as we see fit, or we can again, preload additional data off of this as well. And thanks to Visual Studio Code and Adonis being written in TypeScript, we actually get these autocompletes that we have available to us whenever we drive down each layer into our related models. So here you'll see we could preload our assignee, our creator and the projects. So let's say that we wanted to preload the assignee at this level in addition to the creator. So this is getting a little hard to read here, so I'm gonna break this down a little bit. So we have our users related projects. We're querying from that. We have our preload for our projects. And then within our preload, we have the assignee and the creator. So here, all that we're doing is adding an object within our tasks for our creator. And this will be an object since we only have a single creator and the assignee, and this as well will be an object since we only have a single assignee. And remember, if we needed to, we could use the same approach to update and delete particular related data as well. So if we wanted to delete all of our users' projects, hey, just get down to the query builder for that project relationship and then call delete. And now we're deleting all of our users' projects. Okay, so next up, let's go ahead and talk about our intermediary table data. So we have our project user table and we have our project task table. Automatically for us, whenever we query these many-to-many -many relationships, Adonis is going to automatically include the foreign keys from each of these intermediary tables. So we're going to automatically get back our project ID and our user ID for our project user queries. And we're going to automatically get back our project ID and our task ID whenever we query our project task relationship. So if we dive back to just having our user preload here for our projects, let's simplify this down a little bit. Let's go ahead and get rid of the inner query. So the way that we can access these foreign keys, let's say that we want const project IDs from this. We can go into our user. We know that we have an array of projects within our user. So we can map this to get back the project IDs from the foreign keys for this relationship. And then for each project, we can go project. And so what Adonis will do here is it will automatically put these foreign key values on an object called star extras. This is where Lucid's going to put all of the additional data it has for us within our query results. So it'll be within project star extras dot, and then it's going to prepend it with pivot. So it will be pivot underscore the name of the column that we want to get. So in this case, project ID. Now what Lucid won't automatically include for us is additional data that's not a foreign key. So this would be for our project user relationship, the role ID. So if we wanted to access the role ID, there's a couple of things that we would need to do. And we actually already did one whenever we first introduced our model relationship definitions. So if we dive into our project model and we take a look at our many to many relationship for our user relationship here, we actually have a definition here for pivot columns. 
and we're defining the role ID as a pivot column. And this is how we actually go about automatic inclusion. So now anytime that we query from our project user relationship, Lucid's going to look at this definition and say, hey, there's pivot columns defined here. Let's automatically include these so that the user can filter data down by these, order by these, and just generally have access to them in their results. So with this, we already have available to us the ability to filter our data by the role ID, order by the role ID if we needed to, which in this case wouldn't make much sense, or just have access to this role ID from our query results. So let's say that we went back all of the projects for this user where this user is an administrator. So the way that we could do this is let's get our query callback here and let's filter down with a where statement. And then since we defined the role ID as a pivot column on the model relationship definition itself, we're gonna automatically have access to the role ID within our queries. So we don't need to do any additional steps here to filter down by our role ID here. And then all that we need to do is define a value that we want back. And this also applies for things like order by as well. So we can order by, not that you would ever want to order by a role ID, but you could with the pivot column definition that we have within our relationship. Okay, so let's say that we don't have this defined here. Maybe we don't want it to automatically be included for each and every query. Maybe we only need it on one or two. So we can get rid of that. Go ahead and jump back into what were we in? Our users controller here? Our users controller. And instead of filtering down using a where statement here, what we can do is instead use a where pivot and then define essentially the exact same where statement with the pivot column here. So we could do role ID one. The downside to this is now we're not gonna have this role ID available to us to order by. So if we take a look here, there is no order by pivot. Alternatively here, if we needed to do that, we could define the pivot column for this particular query. So instead of using a where pivot here, we could do dot pivot columns and define the pivot columns for this particular query here. So we could do role ID. And now we can do our where statement using just role ID. And now we can order by just role ID. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on by talking about querying relationship existence. So maybe we want for our particular user here to only preload projects that have some form of a task. So we can, instead of doing our pivot column stuff here, we can get rid of that and just have access to our query builder here. And Lucid's going to make this rather easy for us. So there's a method called has, and all that we need to do is provide the relationship that we want to do an existence check for. So here we're querying all of this user's projects where this project has at least one task record. Now, if we wanted to, and you might be able to see up here in the tooltip, this has method also accepts an operator and a particular value that it needs to match. So here we could do has where it's greater than or equal to three. So now we're getting all of the user's projects where the project has at least three tasks instead of just one, or we could do five tasks, 10 tasks, or whatever we define. Alternatively here, let's say that we want to preload all projects where it has at least one incomplete task. So a task that is not completed. So here, if we get rid of our has statement here, there's an additional method here called where has. And essentially what this is going to allow us to do is first define the relationship, so task, and then it's gonna give us a query callback for this to filter down this data to help determine whether or not any records actually exist for this relationship. So here we can query dot where not status ID, that should be underscored, status dot complete. So now we're querying all of the user projects and we're going to get back only the projects where the project has at least one task that is not complete. So where it does not have the status ID of complete, which in this case is three. And just like with our where statements here, this where has also has available and has or has and where has and or where has for those additional determinations that you might need. Conversely, if we need to query a relationship absence, we have an absence variance of these has statements. So instead of doing where has, we could do where doesn't have. And you might have seen in that drop down that we also have available to us or where doesn't have and and where doesn't have as well. And then if we just need a simple doesn't have, we could call just doesn't have, then we wouldn't get back this query callback. Okay, so lastly here, let's go ahead and talk about the ability to aggregate relationship data. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my method here and I'm gonna move back over to my project controller. And I'm gonna clean this method up here as well really quick. And let's get back to just a simple query. So for this, let's say that we wanna query all of these projects. And with each project, we also want a count of the number of tasks each project has. To do this, we can use a method called with count. And what this accepts is the relationship that we want to get the count of. So in this case, it would be our tasks. So here we're getting all of our projects back. And then with each project is going to be a count of all of that project's tasks. And as you may have guessed, if you need to filter this down, the second argument of the with count method 
is a query callback. So now we have access to the query builder for this relationship. Now what you may not have guessed is that we can use this query callback to actually name the count variable that's going to be plopped on our project. So here we could do query dot, and then there's an as method here to define the name of the count that's going to be stored on our project. So we could do as project tasks as task count, whatever we want it to be called. And now we're gonna have a task count property on each of our project records. Additionally here, we could also, of course, use this to filter down the data that we want to include in this count. So we could do where status ID is status.complete. So now per project, we're gonna get a count of all of its completed tasks. And then of course, if we wanted incomplete tasks, we could do where not. Now, another thing that makes this with count method really cool is that in addition to just filtering down and naming the count, we can also use this to do other aggregates as well. So it's pretty inclusive. So if we wanted to, we could do a min, max, sum, or average here as well. So let's say that we wanted, not that we would ever want to do this, but we wanted to sum up the sort order between our project and our tasks. So here, since on our project task relationship here, we have defined the pivot column of sort order, we're gonna have this automatically available to us within our queries. So we can do a query on the sum of our sort order. And then we can also name this as well if we wanted to. So sort sum. And then not that we would ever want to do this, but we absolutely could if we wanted to. So now for each project is going to be a sum of all of its tasks, sort orders on it. And again, I don't know why you would want to do that, but just highlight that you could, there it is. Okay, so in this lesson, we covered how we can query our relationships, determine whether or not a relationship exists or doesn't exist, and how we can aggregate our relationship data together. I feel like in our creating, reading, updating, and deleting or CRUD overview lesson, we covered how to update and delete data pretty well. There's not a whole lot more that could be covered there uh, in a general way of speaking. So I don't think we're going to need to explicitly dig into those with specific lessons. However, we still need to cover query scopes. So in the next lesson, we're going to be explicitly talking about query scopes. Now we can use them to easily create reusable queries.